Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and regular viewers will know I absolutely love a good old GPU revisit video where we go back and see how something released 3, 4, even 5 years ago stacks up today against modern hardware. So when Gigabyte approached us about a sponsored video where our aim is to find out just how much faster their RX 7000 series GPUs are compared to some of AMD's previous generation offerings, well, you can bet I was eager to get started. In today's video then, we were sent three of Gigabyte's RX 7000 series graphics cards, which we'll be pitting against three of AMD's older GPUs. I am going to go over the three cards I selected as part of this roundup, but first let's take a closer look at the graphics cards that Gigabyte sent over for this video. Our first contender is the RX 7700 XT Gaming OC 12G, and this is built on Navi32 Silicon. It features 54 compute units, 3456 stream processors, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and a boost clock of 2599 megahertz. Gigabyte is using its Windforce cooler for this design with three 90mm unique blade fans, seven composite copper heat pipes, as well as a screen cooling cutout in the metal backplate. Power is delivered by two 8-pin connectors, while you also get two DisplayPort 2.1 and two HDMI 2.1 video outputs. Also on hand then is the RX 7800 XT Gaming OC 16 gigabyte, and I did review this one back in September. Also built on Navi32 Silicon, it features 60 compute units, 3840 stream processors, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and a boost clock of 2565 megahertz. Gigabyte is using a design that's very similar to the Windforce cooler of the 7700 XT model, still with three 90mm unique blade fans, seven composite copper heat pipes, as well as a screen cooling cutout in the metal backplate, but the 7800 XT is a touch longer with extra mass in the heatsink. Power is also delivered by two 8-pin connectors, and we again get two DisplayPort 2.1 and two HDMI 2.1 video outputs. The last contender today then is the RX 7900 XTX Gaming OC 24G. This uses AMD's top of the line Navi 31 GPU, offering 96 compute units, 6144 stream processors, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and a boost clock of 2525 megahertz. Gigabyte's Windforce cooler is also deployed, but in a more advanced form, with three 100mm unique blade fans, nine composite copper heat pipes, and even a vapor chamber cooler. There's a full-length metal backplate too, with the screen cooling cutout, while power is provided by two 8-pin connectors, and we still get two DisplayPort 2.1 and two HDMI 2.1 video outputs. All three of those graphics cards also offer RGB lighting, which is controllable via Gigabyte's RGB Fusion, and you get a choice between the Silent and OC BIOS on all three models. So those are today's contenders, and today I'm going to be pitting them against a few select competitors from years gone by. I've specifically chosen each of these three graphics cards, as at the time they released, they were the top dog of AMD's GPU lineup. First then, we have the RX 5700 XT, which was the flagship RDNA 1 GPU, which released in 2019. Also from 2019, we have the Radeon 7, AMD's first 7 nanometer gaming GPU, and the Vega flagship. But Vega 64 is our final option, which was the highest end Vega GPU when the architecture launched in 2017. All six of those cards then have been tested with the latest AMD Adrenaline drivers, and we're going to be looking at a handful of games using maximum image quality settings at both 1440p and 4K, though do note FSR and ray tracing is disabled for these tests. We're of course using our regular GPU test system, which is provided to us by PC Specialist, and this is built on Intel's i9-3900KS, the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X AX motherboard, and 32GB of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5 memory. Gigabyte also sent over their M28U ARM Edition monitor, which we used for all of our testing today. It's a 4K 144Hz screen that ships with a nifty desk mount instead of a typical stand. Diving right into it then, with a very recent release, we're talking about Alan Wake 2. Now, I'd seen there was some drama about mesh shaders in this title not being supported on older AMD GPUs prior to RDNA 2, but I did not expect both Vega 64 and Radeon 7 to have severe graphical issues in this game, 
to the point where you can only call them a complete fail. The 5700 XT doesn't show these issues thankfully, but it was still a very poor experience with frame rates below 20 FPS even at 1440p. In what is then still a highly demanding but exceptionally good looking game, the RX 7700 XT Gaming OC is over twice as fast as the 5700 XT delivering 45 FPS, while the 7800 XT Gaming OC will get you 54 FPS, and the 7900 XTX Gaming OC is sitting pretty at 82 FPS for 1440p. 4K gaming is always going to be a tough ask in a recent title like this one at maximum image quality settings, but you can still see the 7700 XT coming in twice as fast as the 5700 XT. You'd really want the 7900 XTX however for this resolution, where it managed 44 FPS, and again, just a reminder, that's without the help of FSR, which would boost frame rates on all three of these GPUs. Next up then, we have another new title, Assassin's Creed Mirage. Thankfully, none of the GPUs had graphical issues in this one, and the older cards actually did okay, hitting between 40 and 50 FPS at 1440p. That said, the increased fluidity was immediately obvious, jumping up to the 7700 XT, which hit 85 FPS, making it twice as fast as Vega 64. The 7800 XT was also twice as fast as the Radeon 7, as it hit just under 110 FPS, while the 7900 XTX wasn't far off being three times faster than AMD's early 2019 flagship. All three of AMD's previous generation cards can't do 4K ultra settings either, as they all drop below 30 FPS, and while not designed for 4K, the 7700 XT is still reasonable, delivering a frame rate just under 50 FPS. The 7800 XT is faster still at 59 frames per second, while the 7900 XT shows its power with an impressive 83 FPS on average for 4K gaming. High frame rates are also crucial in Call of Duty, where we've tested the latest Modern Warfare 3 iteration using the built-in multiplayer benchmark. Now, I personally want at least 90 FPS in first-person shooters, and none of the three previous generation cards can deliver at 1440p. The 7700 XT, however, is almost twice as fast as the 5700 XT, delivering 112 FPS on average, while the 7800 XT extends that to 136 FPS. The 7900 XTX could also be an option for a 1440p 240Hz monitor as well, as it came in just below 190 FPS, which makes it more than three times faster than the 5700 XT. At 4K as well, the 7800 XT is still doing a reasonable job with 80 FPS on average, but once more, we can see why the 7900 XTX is really built for this resolution, as it hit just below 120 FPS at maximum image quality settings. Stay tuned for later in the video as well, where we do run some more benchmarks at basic image quality settings to maximize frame rates in esports titles. Moving on though, we come to Cyberpunk 2077, another highly demanding game, and while it did come out in 2020, we're testing the latest 2.0 update with the Phantom Liberty expansion. Here, not even the 5700 XT can maintain a locked 30 FPS at 1440p, whereas the 7700 XT comes in twice as fast with a smooth 70 FPS. The 7800 XT also crushes Vega 64, where it's actually over three times as fast, delivering 86 FPS on average. For 4K gaming though, the clear option is the 7900 XTX, where it hit exactly 60 frames per second on average. Do remember, again, these tests are without FSR enabled, which you could add on to further crank up the frame rate. Next then, we have The Last of Us Part 1, which hit PC earlier in the year, and it's another tough cookie. The Radeon 7 does the best of the three older GPUs, but even then, the 7700 XT is 69% faster at 1440p, despite launching at a much lower price. The 7800 XT is a good option here too, hitting 85 FPS, and that gives it well over double the performance of the Radeon 7. If you want to game at 4K though, it's once more the 7900 XTX which makes the most sense, as it delivered almost 70 FPS on average, which is well clear of anything AMD's previous GPUs are able to manage. In fact, we also see the clear benefit to larger VRAM capacities in this game, with both 8GB cards in the 5700 XT and Vega 64 really starting to struggle. Lastly then, we're taking a trip to space with a look at Starfield. 
Here we're testing in the forested area on Jemison, which is extremely taxing on the GPU and is about a worst case scenario. Even city areas like Neon and Aquila will deliver higher performance than what you're seeing here, so if your GPU is playable in this area, it will be playable anywhere in the game. At 1440p then, none of the older cards are even able to hit 25 FPS, let alone 30, when using the Ultra preset. Starfield can be a very heavy game, even testing with the latest update as of this week, but you'd want at least the 7700 XT for 1440p, and the 7800 XT will be better still with its 50 FPS average. The 7900 XTX is really the smoothest of the lot, delivering 76 FPS. If you want to play Starfield at 4K then, you really don't have too many options. The 7800 XT isn't really designed for this resolution, but it still manages to just about keep over 30 FPS, while the 7900 XTX is the main contender here, hitting 55 FPS. Once more, that is without FSR enabled, which you would probably want to stick on for higher frame rates at 4K. That's going to do it then for our AAA ultra setting benchmarks, but what about esports, I hear you ask? Well, I'm glad you did ask, as it's time to take a look at some esports titles, where we're focusing on the 7700 XT as the most affordable of these three RDNA 3 GPUs. We're also going to be testing at low or medium image quality settings, which is much more realistic if you do play this sort of game. And we've also swapped out the Radeon 7 for the RX 5600 XT, which I think is a more realistic upgrade path if you do play primarily these type of games. Up first then, we come back to Modern Warfare 3. This time we're using the basic image quality preset. The 7700 XT though remains well clear of the 5700 XT, actually delivering a 72% performance uplift on average, and that stretches to 107% when we compare it to Vega 64. The average frame rate of 186 FPS 2 is very, very smooth. Naturally, the frame rates are even higher when looking at Counter-Strike 2, where we're using the medium preset. The 7700 XT was good for 329 FPS here, so that's not far off double the performance of Vega 64, and still a healthy lead over the 5700 XT, giving about an extra 80 frames per second. Likewise, in Fortnite, back on the OG map, we're looking at almost 360 FPS using low settings with the 7700 XT in DX12 mode, and that's a 51% upgrade over the 5700 XT, and it's about twice as fast as Vega 64, so that would be a massive increase in fluidity by opting for this 7700 XT over either of those GPUs. We see similar performance in Overwatch 2 as well. Once more, the 7700 XT is delivering well over 300 FPS, and that puts it well clear of the 5700 XT, with the 5600 XT being behind further still. Lastly, we'll take a quick look at Rainbow Six Siege, where the 7700 XT manages 316 FPS, which is about 90 frames per second faster than the 5700 XT, and it also comes in 71% faster than AMD's Vega 64. The final thing I want to talk about in this video then is overall efficiency. As we know, I think it's fair to say that AMD's previous generation GPUs definitely struggled a bit when it came to power efficiency, but thankfully RGNA3 is a massive leap forward in this regard. As we can see from this chart, performance per watt for all three RX 7000 series GPUs we tested has improved by about double when compared to the 5700 XT, but even more compared to the Radeon 7. In fact, the 7900 XTX is over three times as efficient as Vega 64, and that just shows you how far things have progressed in this area since 2017. That brings us to the end of the video then, where we have pitted AMD's flagship GPUs from years gone by up against their modern competition in the form of Gigabyte's RX 7000 series graphics cards. Obviously, I was expecting the newer cards to be significantly faster, but perhaps not to the extent that we actually saw. The 7700 XT was well over twice as fast as the 5700 XT in three of the games we tested, while the 7800 XT is twice, even three times faster than Vega 64 for 1440p gaming. 
None of those older cards are suitable for 4K gaming either, where the 7900 XDX delivered the highest frame rates today, hitting at least 55 FPS in every game at ultra settings, and that's even without enabling FSR. It's also worth pointing out that newer hardware of course means support for newer technology. By that I mean if you have an AMD GPU that came out before RGNA2, your GPU doesn't support ray tracing, which of course all three of the RX 7000 series GPUs we tested today do support. So if you do want to dabble with that technology, it's worth bearing that in mind. The final thing to say then is if you want to learn more about these Gigabyte RX 7000 series GPUs that I tested for this video, I will leave a link for each down in the description. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments. That's it for this one though, guys. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up. And as always, ding that notification bell and hit subscribe so you won't miss when we upload a new video. We'd also love for you to come over to our Discord server and carry on the conversation that way. You can also check out a link to our merch store and if you're feeling particularly generous, you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic Forkett Guru and I'll see you in the next video.